The models of the late 1980s and 1990s gave us the most iconic moments in fashion. It's also the era where black models started getting more gigs. We were introduced to black models like Naomi Campbell, Veronica Webb, Brandi Quinones, Rashumba Williams, Sonia Cole, Stephanie Roberts, Beverly Peel, Alec Weck, and Tyra Banks. But was the industry trying to be more diverse or were they just looking for a token black girl? Here's how the industry orchestrated a feud between Tyra Banks and Naomi Campbell. Naomi, Karen, Tyra, Veronica. Their names have begun to inspire the same kind of excitement as their white counterparts, and with good reason. There's a new league of black models on the world's runways that's red hot. I think black models are sensational. They have an innate sense of um, uh, the way they walk, the way they dance. Those thing, the girls bring really something to fashion, eh? the way they move, and this the white one should not imitate them because there's something you cannot imitate. Huh? They spark, they give an extra dimension in some way. Uh, maybe it's bringing more personality sort of onto the runway. But this has been going on for a while. I don't remember for how long, but I'd say surely 10 years. What hasn't been going on all that long is the use of black models in advertising. While a few designers have made a point of featuring black models in their campaigns over the years, cosmetic contracts were practically unheard of for black models until recently. Now, in an effort to sell specific lines to women of color, black models are getting some breaks. The face of America is completely different than it was uh, 20 years ago, even uh, to that fact, 10 years ago. And I feel the strides that have been made in this business uh, over the years that I've been in it, uh, the last 10 have been fast. And, and I think that the, the next 10 will be even faster. Oh, you join the club, darling. Join the club. But despite the fact that some new areas are opening up for black models, the size of their contracts can compare with those of their white colleagues. No, you don't get paid as much as you don't get like a million dollar contract. Let's say, you know, a white model would get you get like a thirty-five thousand dollar contract or something. No one really wants to say it, but part of what's troubling black models could well be racism. New York's Consumer Affairs Department claims that blacks are featured in only three percent of fashion ads although blacks represent 12% of the population and control 400 billion consumer dollars. It's a certain ignorance and um, it's a certain tradition that I think is dying hard. Oh yeah, eventually it will die. But you know, I mean, the kind of people who are, who are in power at the huge advertising agencies now were children in the 50s. You know what I mean? And they grew up with that kind of institutionalized racism and not being keyed into or not believing that like black people were beautiful or they could sell things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's not about it's not about what color your skin is, it's about what feelings you convey. What's been the toughest uh, thing for you, say as a model, as a black model? Um covers because they say that they lose like 18% or something when they put a black girl on the cover. Or when you see a black woman on the cover, it's normally with a white a white woman. You know, it's never a black woman by themselves. That's, that's about the hardest thing. If America stops being bigoted, and because if Naomi's on a cover, they decide not to buy it. I'm not saying this is always the case, but in America it seems to be the case. If you look at the, at the numbers of the magazines, you can see who sells. Claudia Schiffer sells, Cindy Crawford sells. Uh, Elaine Irwin, you know, etc. Um, they, a lot of times, if you look at the demographics, when you put a black girl or something on the cover, like the sales drop, and that affects their advertising. But who's responsible for that? The American public. Naomi Elaine Campbell was born in South London, England, to a Jamaican mother. Naomi studied ballet as a child and appeared in a music video for Bob Marley in 1978 and a Culture Club music video in 1983. 
But her career as a model took off in 1986 when she was scouted by an agent from Synchro Model Agency and appeared on the cover of British Elle at age 15. She quickly became one of the most recognized faces in the modeling industry and broke boundaries as a black model. She was the first black woman to be featured on the cover of several major magazine issues and was closing out fashion shows, which was rare for black models. Naomi was also being courted by other agencies from around the world. She formed close relationships with designers like Azadine Alaya and Yves Saint Laurent and formed a trio with her close white model friends, Linda Evangelista and Christy Turlington. And together, they were the Trinity. Those friendships would help her career because they all fought for her presence in advertisements and threatened to cancel projects if Naomi wasn't included. Like a time when Yves Saint Laurent threatened to withdraw his advertisement from Vogue magazine when they refused to use black models on their covers. In 1990, Interview Magazine crowned her the reigning mega model of them all. She appeared in George Michael's Freedom music video alongside other supermodels and starred in Michael Jackson's In the Closet music video as his love interest. By 1991, Naomi had reached supermodel status. Meanwhile, Tyra Banks was a rising model from Los Angeles. Tyra had a hard time as a black model and was repeatedly rejected by agencies because most of them already had their token black model. She finally signed a contract with Elite Model Management and shot her first print piece with Seventeen magazine. In her first year of modeling in 1991, she booked 25 runway shows in Paris, which was rare for a new model, and her career quickly took off. She appeared in editorials for Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Elle, and Vanity Fair, and appeared in campaigns for high fashion brands like Dolce & Cabana and Versace. Tyra cited Naomi as one of her influences when she was trying to break into the industry. But soon the press would start comparing Tyra and Naomi and reporting behind the scenes drama. Although there were other black models in their age group booking high fashion gigs like Veronica Webb, Beverly Peel, Sonia Cole, and Stephanie Roberts, none of those ladies reached the level of supermodel like those two did. In 1992, those black models, including Tyra and Naomi, held a press conference in New York as a black girls coalition that celebrated black models and they discussed the lack of diversity and treatment of black models in the industry, created by Beth Ann Hardison. Still, there is more optimism on the part of black models than ever before, the feeling that the industry may finally be catching up. I think they realize that women of color are beautiful too, you know, they see that we have this dark skin, it's different, it's odd, you know, we have, what they say, 48 shades in our ethnic, in African American women, you know, and so, um, whereas Caucasians have 12 shades, so it gives us a little more of diversity, so there's, you know, you may see someone really, really, really pale and really, really dark, and it just, it's just so beautiful, and I think designers are realizing that, magazines are realizing that, and they're saying, it's time now, you know, put us on the covers, put us in the magazines, in the makeup, cosmetic campaigns, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. The black models now have a, um, a really large voice, and, and we've all made our voices known. And I think that's helped too, because we do feel that we, we can sell makeup, we can sell everything, you know? So um, I think we've all changed, and I'm included. The two models continue to cross paths, walking in the same shows, and even did campaigns together. The media fueled attention by calling Tyra the next Naomi Campbell, or tabloids would say she was here to take Naomi's spot. Those comments started affecting Naomi since she had worked so hard in her career as a black woman to maintain her status as a supermodel. Not to mention, the modeling industry made lots of room for white models and rarely compared them. Naomi started lashing out out of frustration. The two models, accompanied by Beverly Peel, did a photo shoot for Vogue in 1992. During the shoot, there was tension from Naomi towards Tyra. In 1993, Naomi reportedly told Carl Lagerfeld to ban Tyra from Chanel shows or she wouldn't walk. She was allegedly urging industry professionals not to work with her. John Casablancas, the founder of Elite Models Management, spoke out against Naomi in 1993, stating that she was so difficult to work with that he had to drop her from the agency. He called her crazy, irrational, and uncontrollable, and even said that she put pressure on him to drop Tyra and was successful because Tyra made the decision to leave the agency. He said, 
She made me lose Tyra Banks because she didn't feel there was room for her and Tyra at the same agency. No amount of money or prestige could further justify the abuse that has been imposed on our staff and our clients. She has been having people around here in tears. Our staff have killed themselves for her in terms of the number of lies told in order to protect her. In 1994, Tyra spoke to People magazine about her resentment for the comparisons between the two. She said, why do I have to knock Naomi out to be successful? With white models, they don't do that. She went on to say, unfortunately, this business only embraces one African-American beauty. Tyra would ultimately quit runway shows over fear of crossing paths with Naomi. Instead, she turned to more commercial and mainstream modeling gigs and landed a deal with CoverGirl. But the fashion press sure noticed. Tyra was dubbed the new Naomi Campbell. They both had really pretty eyes and, you know, pretty skin and they were, you know, they, they were African-American. And I think at first it probably was a compliment. You know, she was young. Naomi was already established. Naomi Campbell, who's one of the three top two models in the world, was the African-American model in most of the major shows, whether it was Versace or Chanel. She almost always closed the show. The press tried to ignite a feud between the established supermodel and the newcomer. I was told stories of Naomi and Tyra having fights over dresses and over which one would come out last on the runway. The designers notoriously have a rack for each model, their name and their clothes. And Naomi came over and um, wanted to wear one of the outfits that they'd chosen for Tyra and moved it to her own rack. Naomi treated Tyra as she would any other rival model. Publicly, Campbell denied any bad feelings toward Banks and both women spoke out against the prejudice in the business. What's sad is that the industry perpetrates like uh, a, pre a preconceived notion of divide and conquer. You know, like there's only one top black model and that's Naomi. It's hard because in order for me to be successful, based, the, the unspoken rule is that I have to kick somebody out. Tyra wasn't sure she had the stomach for it. She had, you know, been to that main girl stage and she kind of just wanted to be cool with people and have a good time and, you know, and work, you know, and it wasn't necessarily that world. The industry chews you up and spits you out. Tyra, however, after getting a taste of the backstage jealousy, the backstabbing, the ferocious uh, competition, decided to leave, for the most part, the fashion runways. She would be crying, like she hated it. She didn't have friends, it was just language barrier, it was just really, really difficult for her. I think I've been a serious victim of pitting one black model against another. Here I am being compared to Naomi Campbell and saying I'm going to push her out the way or she hates me or, you know, all these weird things. And it, it really made me angry and it made me really not want to do this. Then in 1997, she became the first black woman to appear on the covers of Victoria's Secret catalog, GQ, and Sports Illustrated. In her interview with GQ, she set off her feud with Naomi. I don't feel it's my job to make up. I didn't do anything. I'm not saying anything about Naomi. She expanded her career to acting, appearing in television shows like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and New York Undercover, and had roles in movies like Higher Learning and Coyote Ugly. For the next decade, Tyra would try to avoid questions about Naomi, but found herself having to answer. The two models sometimes crossed paths, but would remain cordial as a sign of growth. Tyra was also ridiculed by the press for her little weight gain. She created her own production company, Bankable Productions, and went on to produce and host America's Next Top Model and her very own Emmy Award-winning talk show, The Tyra Banks Show, and it ran for five seasons. Naomi, on the other hand, entered rehab in 1999 after she struggled with an addiction for five years but still maintained her position as the catwalk queen and continued to grace runways and covers has only added to her frequent flyer miles. Today, she joins co-owners and fellow supermodels El McPherson and Claudia Schiffer in Barcelona, Spain for the grand opening of the newest addition to their fashion cafe family. Hola. Hola. Claudia. Started in 1995, April 7th, and we've now got five running. We've got seven in construction, and we've got like ten planned. The first order of business is an afternoon press conference. Welcome and thank you for coming to the uh, opening press conference for the Fashion Cafe Barcelona. 
It's great to have a place of our own, like everyone else has their own theme landmark restaurant. The fashion industry has their own theme landmark restaurant. Um, this, is, this area seats 200, we can sit 200 dinners. Upstairs we have 800 square meters discotheque. And a big runway. Yeah, Actually, the runway that you can move out electrically, it'll move out. But she was developing a reputation of being mean-spirited or violent after she was accused by a dozen employees and associates of assault over the course of 10 years, dating back to the late 1990s, all of which she pled guilty to. In two cases, she hit two different assistants with her cell phone and kicked and spat on police officers at the airport. In all cases, she received slaps on the wrist with community service or probation. She was assigned to community service. She served five days. She completed her service successfully. She reported every day on time. A variety of duties such as uh, sweeping the garage floor downstairs, uh, mopping and sweeping uh, the hallways uh, downstairs and upstairs, uh, cleaning the grout out of the walls, uh, locker room detail, cleaning the bathrooms. She was on her hands and knees uh, at some point cleaning the walls and the floors on the second floor. Uh, she did scrub the toilets of the uh, bathroom, the female locker room upstairs. In 2005, Tyra invited Naomi on her talk show to rehash their 14-year conflict. Naomi apologized, but denied Tyra's allegation or had no recollection of the incidents. But she did admit to being emotionally unstable and lonely during that period. Making supermodel Tyra Banks, supermodel Naomi Campbell, it has to be just me and Naomi alone. The backstabbing, the name calling, the cat fight on the catwalk. You called me the B word. You said you'll never be me. Years of runway rivalry. I felt like you were terrorizing me. Explode in a dramatic confrontation. Why, Naomi? I am who I am. Naomi was one of my biggest inspirations when I began modeling. To this day, I still remember the joy I felt when the press first compared me to her. It was one of the most flattering compliments I've ever received. But the compliments and comparisons soon turned to controversy. In the headlines, there wasn't enough room at the top for two black models. And the press orchestrated a fierce rivalry between us. The reports were relentless and fueled a feud between Naomi and myself. For the media, the catwalk wasn't big enough for the both of us. You went from the sweetest woman that was giving me vitamins to someone that terrified me on that trip. Oh my God. And Understandable, I, I can understand. I was told on that trip that I was sent home because you don't want me there anymore. So no, I didn't that's finish not that trip. True. That's what I was told. I don't have the power then a winter. There are some specific things that I remember as if it was yesterday that hurt me and hurt me to my core. And I want to ask you about that. And I want to see if you remember them too. Um, do you remember that photo? Do you yeah, remember I remember. That? I remember that photo because we didn't say one word to each other. It was after the thing that happened on the boat. Right. And it looks like we're just chilling and talking. But if you see there, you can, I feel the ice in that picture because I remember it like it was yesterday. I that, don't remember. You don't remember? There I was remember no, only about the... There was no communication. I went from calling my mom, mm -hmm. like, you know, saying, oh my gosh, she's so amazing, to calling her going, I don't know what happened. Right. We just did a photo. She didn't speak to me. Like, I it's remember, I remember just with you. I remember you tell me about the wigs. I don't remember anything else. You don't else. remember anything else? Anything else? But I remember that the end of that trip was not very, it was very cold. We did a fashion show. I, I don't remember what it was. It might have been Jenny or something like that in Milan. And we were doing that fashion show backstage. And you came up to me right when I was about to walk out. And you said something. And it's so funny because it was so surreal at the time when you said it. I didn't think that you could actually say something like that. What did I say? You said uh, 
something like, you'll never be me, don't ever think that you'll be me, and something I like that. I said that? Yes. I can't think, that's something, I'm not that, I'm very Specific. much in the, yeah, I'm very much, I know the person that I am, mm -hmm. and I'm not someone to go and give myself away and say that to anybody. I've never said that in my life. So, but if that's what you remember, yeah. I accept that, but it's not, it doesn't sound like me to people that would know me. I'm not sure if you're understanding how, how much it was painful for me, and I think it was truly a painful time for you, but I don't want to speak for you, mm -hmm. but, and I don't think you, you know this either, that, that that experience between you and I was one of the most difficult times in my entire life life but honestly we can't be too mad at naomi the modeling industry since the beginning has shown us that there isn't much space for diversity and always practice tokenism by only allowing one top black model at a time so in other words if you were a black model you needed to fight for your spot or you would be replaced and tyra banks versus naomi campbell isn't the first rivalry orchestrated by the industry Back in the 70s, Somali supermodel Iman was being compared to fellow black supermodel Beverly Johnson. And the comparison wasn't because any of these models looked alike, which they looked nothing alike. It's because they were the token black girls. Iman said, I learned that magazines would only use one black girl at a time and they were trying to create competition between us. If the industry created more opportunities for models of color, there would be less jealousy and competition. Even now, they've shown us that they rather hire models, and I use that word loosely, who has a large social media following or is connected or related to high profile celebrities over the talented ones that came from nothing. Either way, black models always had to work twice as hard, which is why they're the most influential models ever and revolutionized the catwalk. Everyone who knows me knows that I am super obsessed with and my style is heavily inspired by black 90s supermodels, which is why I added a 90s black supermodel t-shirt to my recent nostalgia collection on the website. So go ahead and pre-order one of your oversized tees and we'll have them back in stock soon. Make sure you guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section and like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content.